The great African novelist Chinua Achebe said that no one can teach me who I am. And what he meant was that we need to look inside ourselves to really be comfortable in our skin, whatever colour our skin happens to be and whatever language we happen to speak. That's particularly relevant to the core principles of the Curriculum for Excellence. It's about the creation of confident learners and active citizens, and that's not something that can be imposed from outside. It's hinged on self-respect and a sense of self-worth. I'm opening with a quote from Achebe, not just because his novel, Things Fall Apart, is one of the greatest of the 20th century, because this debate can benefit Scotland by looking at Scottish studies in an international context. Achebe is from a sizable minority inside Nigeria called the Igbo, and Things Fall Apart looks at how colonialism and Christianity fractured the social cohesion of a 19th century Igbo village. He does this in an incredibly subtle way because although he celebrates the traditional way of life and social values of the community, he's also sensitive to its cruelty and occasional superstition. Achebe shies away from moral absolutes in his work and says, I will never take the stand that the old must win or that the new must win. No single man can be correct all the time. And to that, he, he may add, no single culture can be correct all the time because what's good among one people is an abomination to others. I'm very aware of the difficulties and the potential offensiveness inherent in comparing Scotland's experience to that of peoples from co former colonies of the British Empire, which, as Jean Urquhart and John Finney have already said, uh, Scots played their part in that empire as soldiers and slave traders, as slave traders plantation owners and land grabbers. But there are some things we have in common it took Achebe a long time to be published in, in the English language because he was a novelist that most editors at the time didn't recognise his experiences as valid, as a valid subject for literature. That was back in the 1950s and it relates to racist treatment. And you may think that it may have changed by today. Well, several decades later, in 1994, there was a row when the writer James Kelman won the Booker Prize for how late it was, how late which describes the experience of a Glasgow man struck blind and how he tries to deal with the authorities and convince them of the validity of his illness. It was inspired by Kelman's work with asbestos victims on Clydeside and their struggle to have their disease recognised by authorities. The book of judges fell out over the novel and some, like Julia Neuberger, said it was the work of a savage. In London, the Times columnist Simon Jenkins said the award to Kelman contrived to insult literature and patronise a savage. Kelman responded by saying, my culture and my language have a right to exist and no one has the authority to dismiss that. He added that a fine line can exist between elitism and racism and in matters concerning language and culture, the distinction can sometimes cease altogether. Interestingly, Jenkins has since moved over to The Guardian, a very different sort of paper. Well, he recently wrote a column about Scotland under the headline, Time for England's First Empire to Get Its Independence. So perhaps he's had time to reflect on his views of 17 years ago. <laughs> Kelman is far from being a savage. He's a thoughtful and intellectual writer whose work is inspired by the linguistic theories of Noam Chomsky, who found that we all have an innate set of grammatical rules and that all language is valid. Bad, bad grammar and bad language does not make a person any less human. When I interviewed Kelman about his more recent novel, Kieran Smith Boy, we spent a long time talking about the language of his characters and how some middle-class Scots were also offended by it and how our Scots language has changed and is far less rich in vocabulary than it was at the time of Burns. Because in the 18th century, elocution classes became all the rage after the Union as people struggled to get rid of Scotticisms from their voice. And over time, Scots became the language or considered the language of the crass, the uneducated and the gutter. Scots was not developed in religion or literature for a long time. And it wasn't used in the classroom or the courtroom and latterly the television, except perhaps for comedy. It's a habit that continues to this day at every level of society. James Kelman talks about it in Kieran Smith Boy. He describes the habit of Scottish parents correcting the way their kids speak. And I'm as guilty of that as other people. I correct myself for correcting them. Uh, it's mummy, not mammy. Uh, that's very, very common in Glasgow. But 
I only re realised recently that mammy's derived from the Gaelic word. Uh, a friend from Barra told me that. All this has a corrosive effect in our culture and our self-confidence and even our ability to function as citizens. According to Kelman, children grow up learning they're inferior, their parents are inferior, and right away you disenfranchise entire segments of society. For Kelman and Chomsky, syntax itself is universal. We're all capable of expression. Even if our language has been systematically destroyed, both internally and externally, he believes the syntactical richness of modern Scots as spoken in the street, not the poetry reading, is intensified as vocabulary decreases. He points out that the great Russian writers such as Chekhov worked with the narrows vocabulary, yet his work is still great. And you could see the same for Samuel Beckett, who's considered a genius. The process Kelman describes and Achebe described is known as inferiorism. It's when people diminish their culture from the inside, this was originally identified and named by Franz Fanon, a psychiatrist and philosopher from the French colony of Martinique, who noted that those cultures which are dominated by another culture often see that other culture of the, as the bringer of superior ways and universal human values. Political control is asserted by undermining self-belief. It's a form of cringe, in other words, and it extends beyond the way we speak. It's time... We see, we see that inferiorism in a lot of the discourse in Scottish society today. We talk about ourselves as being uniquely inarticulate, tongue-tied among the nations of the world. We repeat cliches about Scotland being negative, overly sectarian, overly racist, impoverished, intolerant, lacking in ambitions, too sexist, too violent. We are all of these things, but so are other societies, and we also have much to celebrate. But our children do not get that validation often enough. It's a phenomenon that Chinu Achebe would immediately recognise and one that will be addressed when our children know their own culture well enough to criticise it constructively and celebrate it too. Thank you, Thank you very much. I now call on David McCletchie. We have a pretty generous six minutes. Very oh, generous. Thank you.